Hey everyone, my name is Rich. I'm from Arc Life Mysteries, and today we're gonna, going to start uh, something new. We're going to go over the uh, kind of world news from a Christian perspective, and to do this, we will use a resource resource called the Pour Over, and the Pour Over is a kind of a Christian news source that gives you, you know, short little uh, shots of the news just to kind of keep you updated on kind of what's going on, and they do it from a Christian perspective. And so we will uh, start this, and we'll see how you guys like it and kind of go from there, but I thought it's a uh, good way to um, see what's going on in the world and to pray for anything that we need to pray for uh, on those uh topics. So uh, first, let's start out in prayer, as we should always do when you are discussing things of God. So uh, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer to thank you for this day. Uh, we thank you for all the blessings that you've given us, Lord. We thank you for this technology that we can use to connect and um, uh, share your word and share the Christian perspectives that I think this world is sorely in need of. And so I bless everybody that's listening to this right now. Um, please provide uh, for them in every need of their life, Lord. And uh, for those that aren't uh, necessarily a Christian or they're questioning or uh, maybe atheists listening to this, I just pray that you uh, reveal yourself to them and uh, um, in a way that uh, they understand who you are and um, the love that you have for them. So, Lord, we just thank you. We uh, commit this time to you. I just ask that you work through me and uh, use your words uh, concerning the things um, that you would have uh, them know about you. And so, Lord, we thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so uh, each, uh, each time that I receive an email, and, and you, can, you can receive this as well, uh, I believe it's just the pourover.com. Uh, they start off with uh, a quote of the day, so we'll check that out first. The quote of the day is from David Livingston. I will place no value on anything I have or may possess except in relation to the kingdom of Christ. And that is such uh, a great quote. As we know, in Matthew 19 and 20, Jesus says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. And so if you're a Christian, you realize that um, you're not taking anything with you. Uh, I, I, I imagine if you're not a Christian, you know that as well. But um, I think people, especially nowadays, they put uh, way too many um, or way too much emphasis on the things of this world. And they're not really worried about uh, what is eternal. Um, instead of focusing on temporary earthly things, Christians should focus on eternal heavenly treasures, as said in 2 Corinthians 4.18. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. It's a great thing to remember. So first off, in world news, digging out of disaster, over 2,100 people were killed and just as many injured in Morocco's deadliest earthquake in 60 years. Just before midnight Friday, a 6.8 magnitude quake hit the high Atlas mountain range uh, about 45 miles outside of Marech. I think I'm pronouncing that right, I'm not really sure. With a 4.9 magnitude aftershock hitting 19 minutes later and tremors continuing into Sunday. Mountain villages were decimated, leaving some remote areas cut off from communication and help. One village reported almost 200 buildings were flat. The UN estimates that over 300,000 people were affected, and Morocco's king mobilized the Moroccan military search and rescue teams and field medics. Teams from Spain, Qatar, and the U.S. will help recovery efforts, with leaders from Turkey, France, and Germany also offering assistance. Neighboring Algeria, which severed diplomatic ties with Morocco in 2000, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, 2021 even offered to open its airspace for aid and efforts. So it's it's good to see that even though they're not, you know, in the best of uh, places, that they're offering something, at least. And so a verse to consider as you pray for Morocco, uh, when the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. It's from Psalms 34, 17 and 18. And Lord, we pray that 
you're just with the families uh, of the people that are lost and have perished. And Lord, you help the rescuers find anybody else that might be alive. And uh, that any of the ones that did perish, Lord, that they knew you um, and are with you now. So Lord, we just, we thank you for your love and um, protection uh, for the people that did survive. Um, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This is just another uh, another instance of uh, the birth pains that I believe we are experiencing now um, in the end times. And I believe that we are in end times. I believe it's be the beginning of the end times. Um, but nonetheless, you know, I think we're getting close to those birth pains um, increasing uh, in frequency. And so, you know, you got to be right with the Lord. You never know where these things are going to hit. Any disasters, things like that. So, Next up in world news, needle threaded. Over the weekend, a group of leaders from 20 large world economies called the G20 met in New Delhi, India. This group is, well, divided. President Biden attended for a day while Russia and China both sent lower level delegations and there was no family photo for a second year in a row. Still, a surprising number, more than zero, of non-binding decisions were agreed on. The group unanimously, unanimously agreed to pursue and encourage efforts to triple renewable energy capacity globally. Voted to add the African Union, a 55-member bloc, as the 21st member and most shockingly issued a statement on Ukraine that both the U.S. and Russia signed off on. The statement highlighted the human suffering caused by the war in Ukraine and urged members to use not to use force for territorial acquisition, but stop short of condemning Russia. And so this is a very touchy subject. Um, I believe there are a lot of things that aren't um, shared in the mainstream media about this uh, conflict between Ukraine and Russia. All I will say is there's corruption on both sides and that uh, we need to consider the actual citizens of Russia and Ukraine because they're the, again, they're the innocent ones caught in the middle. So from a Christian perspective, it's mind blowing to consider the leaders of these massive countries gathering to determine the future of the global economy. But this isn't as mind blowing as considering God's economy. In Psalm 50, 12, it says, for every animal of the forest is mine and the cattle on a thousand hills. And so everything that happens in this world is allowed by God, um, be it for a short time. And we know that the current um, God of this world is Satan. And so I believe that when these leaders uh, get together and meet, there is a demonic influence that is uh, surrounding them. And so, you know, why do I say that? Well, we know that demonic forces have been behind the leaders of uh, nations and empires since the beginning of time. And I just want to point out something real quick for you guys. Um, this, the, <laughs> the statue of Shiva, which is the god of destruction um, in Hinduism, Shiva is one of the most important quote-unquote gods in Hinduism and a member of their holy trinity, which um, also consists of Brahma and Vishnu. It says Shiva is a complex character who may represent goodness and benevolence as he serves as the pro protector. Shiva is also associated with time, and in this capacity, he is both destroyer and creator of all things. And so I think you have to remember that... Um, you know, this is actually this statue is also out in front of the um, the whatever it's called, the Hadron Collider um, at CERN. And uh, if you don't know what's going on at CERN, you may want to check that out. Uh, it, it's been in the news for a while, but um, I guess they they're smashing particles together to kind of peer into other uh, dimensions, and I believe in some reports it says that they have actually had contact with these 
entities that are in these other dimensions. And uh, as Christians, we know that there are principalities and powers of darkness um, in places of authority, essentially a hierarchy of uh, demonic activity and uh, demonic forces. And so I believe what's speaking to them from the other side is demonic in nature. And so uh, this is a whole nother rabbit hole that we could get into, but just wanted to point out that when these countries leaders get together, there's always this dark presence that's that's kind of around them. And we have to just be careful um, when these people get together because it always seems like once they get together, there's some really weird and sometimes catastrophic things that happen after they, you know, get together in their little meeting and decide what, you know, we, the, the peons of the world are going to have to suffer through. So, um, just something to keep in mind. Next up, U S news. What's allowed? The courts have rolled on moderating moderation Friday. The fifth circuit court of appeals ruled that several arms of the corrupt Biden administration violated the First Amendment by pressuring social media platforms to moderate vids 19 content. According to the court, feds likely coerced or encouraged platforms to remove users' posts that were out of step with government back vax guidelines, or I'm sorry, guidance, and the platforms acted with total compliance. And I kind of hesitated there because anytime you mention this kind of stuff, the tube likes to crack down on it. And so um, we just, we gotta be careful. So the ruling prohibits the White House, Surgeon General, FBI, and CDC from contacting social media companies about their content management, but loosens a lower court's injunction that prohibited virtually any contact between government agencies and social media companies. And, you know, obviously we've seen this with the takeover of Twitter, which is now X, uh, from Elon Musk, and he revealed that, yeah, you know, FBI, CIA, they were uh, in uh, contact with them, and we'll just say guiding them uh, what to say, what not to say, what to pull, what to allow through, and obviously this is corrupt to the core, and uh I believe still happens obviously in other social media platforms and probably still even uh, with X. So now look, it goes on to say Republicans consider this a big win for free speech on online platforms that have become the public square. The corrupt Biden administration maintains it acted on the interest of public health and says that platforms have a responsibility to moderate content. And so when doctors were coming out with natural remedies and natural um, ways to kind of fight the uh, the vids, uh, these doctors were shunned. They were they were banned. They were shut down. Um, you know, any holistic kind of uh, things to make you feel better, or you know, any any guidance on maybe just getting exercise, uh, fresh air, sun, vitamins, um, and things like that were completely uh, uh, silenced, which is completely ridiculous. And I think anybody with a brain can see this and see it for what it is. Uh, You had, uh, you know, Joe Rogan taking whatever it was. um, Oh, I forget the, the medicine that he was taking. They called it horse dewormer. And they know, obviously, that this stuff was used to help. I think it was malaria or something like that. Um, I, th- I think there was a prize given to this stuff. Um, boy, and it's escaping my mind on what the thing is. It, obviously, I, I think you guys know what I'm talking about. But uh, anything that goes against Big Pharma, obviously, they're going to shut down. And uh, moving on to the Christian perspective, as believers, we bring our speech into submission to the spirit. We are slaves of righteousness ruled by a master whose goodness inspires thanksgiving and praise. Romans 6, 22 and 23. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And 
We're going to move on to the last section here. It's called In Other Brews. Obviously not beer. I mean, not, you know, we're well, not going to get into that. Not that there's anything wrong with beer. I think the, uh, the issue is with excessive drinking and things like that. Not something I'm going to get into. Anyway, uh, Hong Kong recorded 6.2 inches of rain in one hour Friday, its heaviest rainfall since records began 139 years ago, causing flash flooding and submerging metro stations. Meanwhile, Hurricane Lee rapidly surged to a brief, brief stint as a Category 5 storm, creating dangerous conditions off Uncle Sam's east coast. It's still unclear if, when, or where Lee will make landfall. And I'm sure all the climate activists will point to climate change or uh, uh, it used to be called global warming before that I'm sure it was called something else and, uh, from my perspective in my opinion these are cycles that the earth goes through and uh, you know God's not we know as Christians God's not going to um, allow these things to completely wipe out humanity when he is good and ready he will take care of the renewing of this world Next up, a new report out of Georgia shows a grand jury has recommended an additional 20 people, including one current and two former U.S. senators, to be indicted alongside the 19 co-defendants charged with interfering in the 2020 presidential election. Former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, one of those 19, was denied the request to move his case from state to federal court. And uh, without saying too much, because I probably not allowed not probably get banned um this is really ridiculous and it is a weaponizing of the doj to silence and jail dissenters from the uh the mainstream narrative the corrupt biden white house and everybody that's connected to it so moving on the white house has completed a 50 million dollar total gut renovation of the situation room it's a story but rarely photographed room where President Obama watched the raid that took down Osama bin Laden, which I have questions about, and President Bush gave the orders to begin the war on Iraq in 2003 following the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks that killed nearly 3,000 people 22 years ago today. As we remember and reflect on that day, um, I I will just say that I have questions about that day. I think anybody that has common sense should have questions about that day. And that's pretty much, I guess, all I'll say about that right now. Um, but, I, I, but I will say this about the $50 million total gut renovation. You know, maybe spend, I don't know, $30 million on that and maybe give $20 million to the... Uh, the people of Maui and, and Lahaina who have had to deal with um, the fires and the complete ineptitude of everybody that responded to it and, you know, on, on the part of the government, you know, $700 for those guys is ridiculous and insulting while we're giving billions and billions of dollars to Ukraine. Um, it's just totally disgusting in, in my opinion. Moving on, 19-year-old Coco Goff won the Women's U.S. Open this weekend, upsetting the number two ranked uh, Arena Sablanica. Just butchering these names today. In a dramatic tennis match, it's Goff's first career Grand Slam, making her the youngest American to win since Serena Williams in 1999. Novak Djokovic won the Men's U.S. Open, his 24th career Grand Slam, and I believe... This is, I guess, his first win since being able to compete uh, because he was blocked from competing because he didn't get the the mandate. So uh, congrats to him and to Coco Goff. And just one thing to note on this, uh, ESPN said that she took a moment to soak it all in uh, after, the, after the win. However, as Tony Dungy points out, she was actually praying. And so, um, you know, anything to, anything to, to, I guess, gloss over uh, Christianity and, and anything that has to do with it, um, the mainstream media likes to do. So just wanted to point that out. One of the last things, submerged in scandal, 
Uh, Spanish Soccer Federation Chief Luis Rubiales has resigned from his position after publicly kissing player Jenny Hermoso at a World Cup victory celebration. Rubiales faced a criminal complaint and widespread outrage and said his position had become untenable. Um, not a big soccer guy. Um, my sports are mainly uh, football and hockey as my Steelers got completely crushed yesterday. I don't even want to get in on that. And uh, so, yeah, not not big into soccer, but doesn't surprise me that there's scandal going on in that and in every walk of life. So um, that's going to do it for today's uh, update. And I just want to thank you guys for tuning in. If you like this, if you have any suggestions for this, I, I'd love to hear them. Please give me your thoughts. And if you wouldn't mind uh, subscribing to the channel so we can uh, put out God's word and spread his word and spread a Christian perspective on what's going on in the world. So I just thank you guys. Um, we're going to wrap up in prayer here real quick. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. Uh, Lord, we pray for all these things that are going on right now in the world, uh, especially today being 9-11. Lord, I pray that your hand is over um, everyone. Uh, really everybody in the world that, that witnessed this and continues to um, be affected by this. I know, you know, the victims' families and the, the responders and uh, just, you know, the guys that went into combat uh, over this event. I pray for all of them, Lord. Uh, please provide and bring to them peace and healing uh, that only comes from you, Lord. So, again, we thank you for this time. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.